And welcome back to EDH Deck Building. I am your host, Demo. And as I've already talked about in my first spoiler video for this new set, is it an actual set? I don't know. I think these might just be commander decks. Warhammer 40K, it's crossover property. It is, again, very similar to Dungeons and Dragons. Um, you know, you don't really need to know anything about the original. Just like with Dungeons and Dragons, you can very easily play the you know, Forgotten Realms cards or whatever, the Baldur's Gate cards without knowing anything about D&D. The same is the case here. So we, we don't know. I'm sure all the 40K fans out there are going to have a lot of opinions about, you know, the flavor and all that kind of stuff. For me, I don't have any opinion there because I don't really know much about 40K. So um, I'm just going to be evaluating these cards on their face and how they affect the Commander format. So let's take a look at some new ones here. We have... Marnius Kalgar, two white, blue, black, so an Esper Commander, legendary creature, Astartes Warrior. I'm sure I'm going to hear about that in the comments. Astartes? Is that how you said? I'm sure it's not. Um, I, I think, again, we have a lot of new creature types here. I know with the um, Stranger Things cards, they ended up reprinting them as sort of actual magic cards. I don't know if they're going to do that here. I don't think so. I think these are the, the the actual thing. So these creature types, you know, obviously are going to be, are now in the game of magic, right? Anyway, it's a 3-5 double strike. Whenever one or more tokens enter the battlefield under your control, draw a card. Wow. Okay. Whenever one or more tokens enter the battle. Wow. So it's Benny Brax, and of course this has white in it, so you can put Benny Brax. This is actually better than Benny Brax because Benny Brax only triggers on your end, on each end step. So you're getting maximum one card draw per turn. Here you can obviously get a lot more. Um, you know, one. I just made a Benny Brax deck, and I, I I think it's great. You're adding more colors here, more options. This ability is even better than Benny Brax. I haven't even gotten to the second ability yet. Um, because, I mean, obviously it's one or more, so you can't cast a Secure the Waste and draw a ton of cards. You Secure the Waste for six, and you're going to draw one card, right? However, um, one of the best, Pegasus Refuge, or not Pegasus Refuge, um, I'm confusing my Pegasus token-making cards. Uh, Sacred Mesa is one of the best cards in my Benny Brax deck because it's just two mana to draw a card, and you can do it on everyone's turn. That's why it's so great. And Sacrifice the Tokens, don't care. I just want to create the tokens. The same is true here. That card is amazing in this deck because, you know, and, and you, this might be a situation, this is going to be a really popular commander. I haven't even gotten to the other ability yet. This is going to be a really popular commander for sure. And Sacred Mesa, because it's so fantastic in this deck, I think is, because that essentially is two mana draw card, right? Sacred Mesa is two mana draw card in this deck because each instance of creating a, a Pegasus token is a separate instance and will trigger this separately so you're gonna that's two mana draw a card whether or not the tokens stick around you don't care right um this might be a situation and i'm going on a, on a little bit of a tangent here um because you have ishin which became an incredibly popular commander and fervent charge which is a card that i talked about in one of my very first 10 cards videos which i think was like a two dollar card when ishin came out everyone was like wow that card is a perfect fit in ishin and it skyrocketed it was like a 40 dollar card for a while i don't know what it is now so it might be a good idea to you know i just got my sacred massa for <laughs> my benny braxtick a couple of weeks ago that you might see a card like that or cards like that not necessarily that one that's just an example that i can think of that are going to really jump in price because of a commander like this, right? Um, anyway, what else is this guy doing? He's already got a fantastic ability. You can pay six. That's a lot of mana. Create two, two, two white Astartes warrior creature tokens with vigilance. Okay. So six is a lot. Um, obviously, you know, we can do a training ground scenario where we reduce that cost. I don't know how much you're going to want to use that ability, though. It's so easy to create tokens. This is exactly what I said about Benny Brax. So easy. To, there's a bazillion ways to create tokens. Even in mono white, there is. Of course, in these colors, there's, you know, you have blue and black as well, right? There's so many ways that it's a, you know, you likely won't need to use your commander's ability. I wouldn't go through all the trouble of, I put a training grounds and all that stuff in here just so I can use my commander's ability a lot because, again, pest, uh, 
sacred mesa is just better than this, right? It's better than even if I training grounds, now my ability costs four. Sacred mesa only costs two, right? So there's so many great ways to, to create tokens that you don't need this. There are free ways to create tokens. There's, there's ways that will just spit out tokens, you know, on your end step or something or on your upkeep. Um, so you don't even... I don't know how often you're going to use that ability. You might not use it at all. The first ability is fantastic. This is going to be a really popular commander, without question. All right, moving on. Zarek the Silent King. One black, black, black. Legendary artifact creature, Necron. So we have another mono black legendary artifact creature. And again, we are. I already talked about one. So this must be a thing with the Necrons. I guess they're artifact creatures. 3-4 with flying, my will be done. Whenever Zarek the Silent King attacks, mill three cards, you may put an artifact creature card uh, or vehicle card from among those cards milled this way into your hand. So again, we're doing the artifact and graveyard theme. So I guess this and the other guy, whatever his name was, are going to fit in each other's decks. M almost assur assuredly, right? Because there's a lot of th similar things going on. Um, so you're milling... Put an artifact creature card or vehicle card. So you can do mono black vehicles here, I guess. Um, again, you're in the same situation with the last one. Uh, you know, pretty much everything I said about the last one here. Guardian Beast, if you can afford one, right? Um, you know, there, there's not a ton of awesome support um, in mono black. There's a little bit. It's decent. You can do a deep dive. Again, Kaladesh uh, and Aether Revolt work. We're pretty decent sets for. Um, artifact support in mono black. There's a few cards there, not a ton. Your big, big drawback here is protecting your stuff, right? My commander is an artifact and a creature. It dies to removal incredibly easy, and likely the rest of your stuff in your deck is going to die incredibly easy. I don't think this is going to be a very popular one at all, again, for the reasons that I just named, but also the ability is not great. It, um, he attacks, you mill yourself. You know, you put an artifact or vehicle from the cards milled this way into your hand. Yeah, it's okay. You know, it's all right. It's card advantage. It's not bad. Uh, definitely won't be a popular one, though. All right, moving on. Inquisitor Grayfax. One, a white, a blue, and a black. So another Esper Commander. Uh, Human Inquisitor. And again, we do not... No, Inquisitor is a brand new creature type. We've never seen that before. 3-3 uh, three, three with Vigilance unquestionable wisdom other creatures you control get plus one plus oh and have vigilance sure if i was just building around that ability meek stone type of effects right um or the creatures don't untap effects that works really great there if you have um a a commander with vigilance and also a commander that is giving everything everything vigilance um great stacks commander <laughs> not fun but um even i mean crackdown is great Likely your creatures are going to be white anyway, but Crackdown, Meek Stone, all that kind of stuff. There's uh, what Dream Tides is a good one. Um, th th there's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot of effects in Esper colors for tapping down creatures. And of course, you won't have to worry about that nearly as much, at least with attacking, because obviously you have Vigilance. However, it looks like we got a tap ability here, so maybe that won't work as well. Uh, pay one and tap. Tap target creature and opponent controls. Investigate. Okay, so now we have an ability that we can actually tap down our opponent's creatures as well. Wow. However, you have to tap your commander, so it gets a little um, it gets a little tricky here because that that Staxi strategy will work, um, especially with like Dream Tides, because with Dream Tides, I believe non uh, green creatures don't untap at all, so you can just tap down your opponent's green creature and it will never untap. Um, but then you have to figure out a way to untap your commander. Um, again, Crackdown will work because your commander's white. Um, but, you know, Me Meek Stone will keep your commander tapped down. You probably want some untappers anyway, right? You want the Thousand Year Elixirs and the Mage Rate Stones and all that stuff anyway. So, because then you can use your commander's ability a few times. So that probably will work, you know. And then on top of all that, you get to investigate as well, which is great. So now we can do the investigate theme. And again, there's a ton of, of support there. Uh, Tamio's journal, you know, because why not? You're investigating anyway. Turn them into tutors. Um, Academy Manufacturer, as I just mentioned in a video recently, you know, that's why I rated that card so high 
when I first talked about it, you know, I, I think I had it like number four from Modern Horizons 2, which is like one of the best commander sets of all time because I just knew there's we're just going to keep having these commanders with treasures or, or clues or whatever. So now here's another commander that you can throw that Academy Manufactor in. And every time you investigate, you're going to get a food and a treasure as well, right? So that, of course, goes in there. There's a lot of support there. The token theme, again, works here as well. Um, again, Benny Brax. You can throw Benny Brax in this deck. And investigating is creating a clue, uh, you know, creating a token. So you get a card draw there as well. This is going to be, I think, a popular one. I don't know. Maybe not. I, again, I think the Staxi theme works great here. And maybe people won't like that. So maybe, you know, it's hard to tell sometimes. All right, moving on to the Swarm Lord. Three, a green, red, and a blue. So another team or commander. And it's another Tyranid. Five, five. As rapid regeneration, the Swarm Lord enters the battlefield with two plus one plus one counters on it for each time you've cast your commander from the command zone this game. So that's pretty good. It's kind of nice when you have a commander that, you know, and there's we've seen a bunch of these already, of course, that, you know, it kind of sucks to have to recast your commander. Now you're at least getting a benefit out of it, right? So every time you recast your commander, you're putting two counters on it. That seems pretty good. But, you know, not enough to build around, I don't think. Also, though, has Xenos Cunning. Whenever a creature you control with a counter on it dies, draw a card. Wow, that is definitely build-aroundable. Um, very build-aroundable. Wow, that is really good. We've seen similar effects like this. And, and again, I just talked about this with another video I, I haven't come out with yet. <laughs> Spoilers, I'm coming out with a video where I'm talking about this. Uh, I'm actually talking about the card Magnetic Web. Um, and it, it's a very wordy card, but the text at the bottom is the most important part because it just says tap, pay one and tap, put a magnet counter on target creature. A lot of the commanders that they're coming out with now just say whenever a creature you control with a counter on it. It doesn't matter what kind of counter. So a magnetic web is a good card in that deck because this just it just becomes sort of pay one draw card. Just whenever a creature of yours is about to get killed, you just pay one, put a magnet counter on it, and now when it dies, you draw a card, right? So any card like that. The plus one, plus one counter theme. I mean, obviously with your commander, this is great because my commander is going to have counters on it, and then when it dies, I get to draw a card and then recast it as more counters. I don't know how much you want to do that, but you can, right? More so, I just want to come up with lots of interesting ways to put counters on stuff. You think, okay, I can do a plus one, plus one counter theme, and you can. I think the more interesting way is the magnetic webs and the cards like that that just throw weird whatever counters on your stuff and so that when your stuff dies, you get to draw cards. And, you know, I, I say all the time, I love when creatures have dice triggers where if they die, I get something out of it because then it's less of a feel-bad moment where, I, you know, I lost my creature, but at least I'm getting something out of it. Great commander. I, I think this is going to be a popular one for sure. Again, that that last ability is so open-ended. Whenever a creature you control dies with a counter on it, any kind of counter, you get to draw a card. I, I mean, again, with the card draw, I think we've had, what is this now, the third commander from this uh, set already that has a draw card trigger on it? Jeez. All right, and the last one I'm going to talk about today is one that actually got spoiled a long time ago. This came out like almost a year ago, maybe in like December or something. A bat in the despoiler, two blue, black, and a red. Um, again, a Startes Warrior 5-5 five, five with Trample has Mark of Chaos Ascendant. During your turn, spells you cast from your hand with mana value X or less have Cascade, where X is the total amount of life your opponents have lost this turn. Um, again, probably going to be a popular one. People really like Cascade. I'm not the biggest fan of it, but... You know, I don't like the randomness of it. If you can set up the top of your library, I find it to be a lot better. Again, if you're in a deck, like, for example, you know, I think people will say, oh, he's crazy. He doesn't like Cascade. You're in a blue deck here, for example. So are you going to put counter spells in this deck? Probably, right? If I Cascade into a counter spell, boy, that feels pretty bad, right? I just wasted it. It doesn't do anything unless I want to counter the, the my own spell, right? So what like th just that scenario, what do you do about counter spells in your cascade deck? Do you put a bunch in because if you cascade into them, they're useless, 
right? So you just wasted your commander's ability and you wasted a counterspell. So it's really, I know people love it, but for me, I don't love the randomness of it. I would like to set up the top of my library to make sure I'm actually getting a payoff there because I hate whiffing. I hate it, right? Um, and that's essentially what that is. Cascading into something you can't use, right? I cascade into a Vandal Blast and no one has an artifact. I just wasted my Vandal Blast, right? Which is one of the best, you know, removal spells in the entire format. So, during your turn, spells you cast from your hand with mana value X or less have Cascade where X are the total. And it is, you know, also reliant. It's not even just Cascade. It is reliant on your opponent's losing life. That's not that hard to do. Obviously, you can just attack with your commander. Your opponents, you know, maybe they chump, so you lose three life. Uh, this is very similar to a Yidris deck because a Yidris, you had to attack with your commander to get the trigger here. Kind of similar where you're getting the Cascade after you've, you know, there's a, a stipulation attached to it where I have to connect and then I get the Cascade. Very limiting. I like that it is limiting this way so I can't just cast in Expropriate and Cascade. I got to do nine damage, right? This is the total amount of life your opponents have lost this turn. You probably, maybe the easiest way to do this is without any combat at all, um, where you can just, you know, do a pyrohemia type of effect, you know, um, where you, you just deal damage to every player. So now all, if you do one damage to all your opponents, now that's three damage. The total amount of life your opponents have lost this turn is three. So now if I activate my Pyrohemia twice, now it's six. So now I'm really getting up there, right? So that seems like it's probably worth it. Anything that is doing this for free is going to be even better. Things that just on your upkeep deal damage to all your opponents. There's lots of those, especially in black. Lots of those at the beginning of your upkeep, each opponent takes damage, uh, loses life, same thing, right? Damage, loss of life, same thing. And this this is, you know, if it said damage, then it wouldn't include loss of life. But this says loss of um, the total amount of dam uh, life your opponents have lost. So that includes a life loss effect and also a damage effect. So that includes all of them. So there's a lot of options there. Also probably going to be a pretty popular one for sure. But that is all. Let me know what you guys think of these new commanders um, in the comments below. Pretty powerful ones in this. There's some. There's going to be really popular. There's at least three here that I think are going to be pretty popular commanders. Depending on how much access there are to them, right? There always is the issue here of how how much can people get their hands on these. Uh, I guess if this is just like Forgotten Realms, they will be easily accessible, so that won't be an, an issue, I don't think. But let me know what you guys think. That is it for today, and thanks for tuning in.